Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. If there's one thing we're sure of when it comes to Polaris, it's that they're very much in tune with what their dealers, and therefore their customers, really want. Polaris riders never have to wait more than one season for a vehicle or version of a vehicle they're demanding. And it's this quick response to buyer demands that keeps Polaris on the cutting edge of snowmobile product design. For 2018, Polaris has introduced a brand new model and a couple of variations of current models, variations you've been asking for. The XCR Switchback is a model that simply makes sense, and there's not much to be said here that hasn't already been said. Simply put, it's an XCR with a longer track, and it's 100% awesome. Is it better than the short XCR? No, it's just different. It still utilizes all the shorter XCR's race-ready upgrades over the regular axis, but sits on a 137 by 1.352 Cobra track. The longer track helps to bridge bumps and provides an increase in traction, but doesn't seem to affect handling at all. In other words, it's a win-win with no downsides. The real big news from Polaris is an all-new model called the Titan. Polaris is suggesting the Titan is a form of crossover sled, but not in the traditional sense. Instead of crossing over between on and off trail, the Titan has been designed to cross over between work and play, and do a great job at both. The base of the platform is the 800 clean fire engine. More power obviously equals more fun and more capability. A narrow front end still rides and handles great and a gigantic articulated 155 inch by 20 inch wide track provides more traction than any normal person is ever going to need. Real beauty of this sled is its ergonomics though. Sitting on a Titan feels a lot like sitting on an Assault. A tall riser with a mountain bar is very mountainish, but the comfortable wide seat is very trailish. That big skid frame rides surprisingly well, and the biggest surprise of all is how well this very large snowmobile handles, all while being capable of towing up to 1,200 pounds thanks to its high-low neutral reverse transmission, and hauling huge cargo thanks to its trick lock-and-ride cargo platform. There are three Titan models to choose from, all powered by the 800 clean fire mill and all utilizing the same suspension setups front and rear. This probably isn't gonna be an assault buyer's next purchase, but for anyone who wants to both work and play and doesn't wanna sacrifice for either, the Titan might just be the best option this industry has seen so far. For 2018, Arctic Cat is finally unveiling something we've been waiting for for three full years. But then they also hit us with a big, or in this case, little surprise, we just didn't see coming. The new SeaTech 2 800 engine is the most important news to come out of Arctic Cat since the SeaTech 2 600 was released. There have been so many times over the past few seasons that Arctic Cat sleds have finished poorly in shootouts or received less than glowing reviews simply because the old 800 motor was dirty and had an annoyingly high RPM bias power band. The 800 DSi will have comparable peak power with the 800 Suzuki, but the big difference again is gonna be in the, the low to mid throttle operation. We have a large uh, torque increase down low for throttle response, uh, improved acceleration. Well, the development process uh, began way back, even in, in 07, 08, with the uh, original concepts in Articat engineering on different sized engines to do uh, uh, clean technology. Over that time, it evolved. Uh, we were able to release the 600 DSi uh, in 14, but while that engine was being developed, uh, we were also concurrently working on the 800 DSi. I think every Arctic Cat owner on the planet is thinking exactly the same thing we are. Finally. And fortunately, this engine is every bit as good as we hoped it would be. Bottom end and mid-range power like this is going to make riding crossover and mountain sleds so much easier. And it's going to make riding pretty much any 800cc trail sled way more pleasant over long periods of time. We did know the 800 SeaTech 2 was coming, so while it's definitely great and the most important thing Arctic showed us for 2018, the most surprising new product was something we never saw coming. It is the ZR200. Cool idea? Yup. Talk about giving the snowmobile industry something we've been asking for for over 15 years. But what is the ZR200 all about? Really the target audience for this is kids coming off the 120, 
with more performance, more speed, more capability, and really can help teach them how to ride snowmobile before they're ready to move on to that full-size snowmobile. As a guy with two little girls, both currently riding 120s, I can't describe how happy I am to know that there's something for them to move into when they grow out of their little sleds. Model year 2018 sneak peek for Skidoo and Yamaha has both big news and little news. Let's talk to Pascal Vincent, Skidoo's product manager, about what Skidoo has up their sleeve for model year 2018. What Skidoo is bringing for 2018 on the MXZ, it's MXZ XRS and Renegade XRS, both on the new Rev Gen 4 platform hosting the 850 E-Tech. We are having more than 60% of the lineup that are now moving onto the Rev Gen 4 platform and the 850 E-Tech engine. In terms of deep snow, we are bringing the free ride onto the Rev Gen 4 platform and the 850. However, we reimagine the free ride to handle like a summit, but keeping the attitude and the toughness that the free ride is known for. In the crossover, we reimagine the Renegade Backcountry X with the new C Motion rear suspension that is specifically designed for crossover. C stands for crossover. Skidoo is very serious about this 50 50 crossover emerging market. And so, for the Renegade Backcountry X in 2018, they've developed another new skid frame. It's called C Motion. The C Motion has been developed specifically for the Renegade Backcountry application. So the rear suspension is uncoupled and have a fixed rear arm. So the goal here is to have a good stability in trail application. In the C-Motion, we also have front arm from the air motion, but in a longer configuration, which bring a good stability to the, the suspension. We also have in this configuration of suspension an adjustable rear chuck. Also include a rear tip rail configuration in order to have a good handling in trail riding. We also developed Backcountry X with a 146 inch track in order to have a good behavior in deep snow and also being able to tackle beam bump and have a good stability through the, the rough trail. In order to bring a good stability in trail riding, we integrate to the new front suspension the trail uh, sway bar. Very easy to ride in deep snow. And when you jump in the trail, you have a very good stability through the big bump and going into the corner. How about a fully functional electric starting system that has no battery and no electric starter motor? Confused? We were. Here's what it's all about. In the mountain, when you're riding, okay, a typical ride, you went just stuck with your summit, okay, and you shovel for half an hour, and then you go back on your sled. Having the shot system, when you're sweat and tired, and you just have to push a little button and it goes like boom, this is a huge gift. So today, the shot system, the way it is designed, it does not use a motor, it does not use a battery. We use the actual magneto and stator as the motoring for, to start the engine together with a capacitor. In the morning, you need to rope start your vehicle once and you need to run for at least two minutes. Then you're good to use the shot system. Each time you're going to use it during the day, you need to have 20 seconds of idle. After 20 seconds of idle, you are fully recharged and you can reuse the shot once more. And as we know in the mountain, each quarter pound is very important. We were thinking about that since we did introduce the E-Tech back in 2008. If we will have a, just a regular SDI or other EFI system, this won't work, okay? We will need too much energy to start the engine and it won't work. This is two pound, little less than one kilogram. And this is the weight we had over a manual start. That's it. Compared to a standard electric starter with a battery and so on, which is around 20 pounds. So that's the big news from Skidoo. Now let's talk about the little news from Yamaha. Back in the day, Yamaha produced a mini snowmobile, sort of a half size or three quarter size snowmobile called the Snow Scoot. Well, guess what? For model year 2018, the Snow Scoot is back. So the Snow Scoot name we decided to resurrect, um, you know, there were a couple of naming options and some debate in planning as to what we should name the new little vehicle. Obviously it's gonna be a step up for SRX 120s, so there's a naming opportunity there. 
but we also wanted to make sure we, um, we took advantage of the opportunity to grow this sport, to increase demand with brand new customers. While not a pulse-pounding power package in the new snow scoot, it does have a full CVT. Listen up here about the details on that drive line. Snow Scoot has a full CVT transmission in it, so it's got a primary and a secondary clutch, a roller secondary in fact, and that was pretty important compared to the 120 because even though we increased the power of the Snow Scoot, without uh, being able to change gear ratios, you'd never be able to accelerate or you'd have no top speed. So one of the biggest parts of the project was getting the clutches dialed in. This may seem a little strange, but a full-size adult can actually fit on and ride a Snow Scoot, and by the way, have a pretty good time doing it. However, it may not be your first choice for a 100-mile ride. Snow Scoot's an interesting little vehicle because it, it, an adult can ride it, but of course it's a pretty small snowmobile. I mean, we did have some fun here, but for the most part, it's designed for um, you know youthful, younger, smaller people and just to have some fun in the backyard. So even though the Snow Scoot is little news, it actually turns out to be pretty big news. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Snow Scoot sells with its return after 25 years. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. Experience a ride you'll never forget. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Four stroke turbo sleds and exhaust modifications are like performance cars and exhaust upgrades. They work, and in some cases, exceptionally well, especially today with our all new MBRP Articat and Yamaha turbo exhaust setup. And joining us for our install today is Jared Heshka, Power Sports Brand Manager for MBRP. Jared, welcome to the Trail Tech Shop. Right. Thanks, AJ. I'm super happy to be here and uh, looking forward to install this exhaust. Cool. Okay, so Jared, tell me exactly what we got here and exactly what we can expect to see from this system once we get it installed. In Alrighty, so this is uh, our MBRP race exhaust system, as you know, it's for the Sidewinder as well as the Thundercats. So our race system comes with a 304 stainless body. It's nice MBRP embossed and on it. Um, the brackets are laser cut too, so these are guaranteed fitment. It is gonna be a louder exhaust. I don't recommend it for like a, a trail application, so anything off trail, this is definitely the one to go with. Um, performance gains, this was by far the biggest performance gain out of any exhaust we built before. After extensive dyno testing, um, we've tried about seven different alterations to make sure one, it flows good, and two, we're gonna see gains out of it. So you saw like just north of about 210 horsepower on it, so that's about a 22 horsepower increase over stock. So you guys were seeing about 189 horse in stock form and this thing gets us north of 210 horse. Exactly, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy, you know, like increased turbo spool, um, you know, the lightweight design of it makes, you know, everything easier from working on the sled to just an overall power gain. And you're talking about 10 pounds of weight savings with just this exhaust. Exactly, so. just the exhaust, yes. It's huge, especially in the four-stroke market. MBRP's Power Sports motto is race inspired, trail proven. This is the race inspired side of things and this exhaust is a race only modification. However, there is a trail version of this exhaust in the works and it will be available in the near future. But truth be told, we just couldn't wait to show you this setup because of the incredible performance gains for those using it in race applications, both flatlands and in the mountains. Also keep in mind the system requires the use of MBRP's own custom fuel programmer with custom mapping specific to the Genesis Turbo and Cat 9000. Due to the extensive dyno testing of this motor, MBRP recognized the need to add fuel at select RPM ranges to recognize full horsepower potential and not damage the motor by running too lean. Okay, so enough about the details, Jared. Let's get this thing out and actually take it for a run on the lake and see what all the fuss is about because this may be the most horsepower that we've ever seen from a snowmobile exhaust. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm super excited to ride it and just wait. Next season, we got headers in the works. Sweet. Right from startup, this thing makes a statement. The exhaust note is deep and loud, and if you're racing, they're gonna know that you're coming. The very linear and smooth throttle response of the turbo is heightened, and now a slightly edgy and very aggressive delivery. From roll on right through the mid range, you'll notice the 22 horsepower in a big way, and this sled was already a rocket. Getting to 100 plus miles per hour is quite literally insane, as the zero to 60 numbers seem to happen in sub three second territory. I'm not sure how long it takes to get to 100, but it ain't long. And the sound at wide open throttle? Yeah, triple triples don't have anything on this. I have always been impressed by the power of the Sidewinder. I mean, it's nothing short of arm stretching. But let me tell you what, with this exhaust and fuel programmer package from MBRP, you might need to add Velcro to the hand grips because this thing is a rocket. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by 
Triton trailers, built for adventure. Each season, it's pretty easy to tell early on what the most impressive sleds that year are going to be. Just by taking into consideration known traits of a chassis, engine, suspension setup, and shocks, will give you a pretty good overall idea of what that sled's going to be like as a whole. But each season, there are hidden gems that only start to really shine partway through the season when you've got miles on them. Oftentimes, these are sleds you didn't really expect to be impressive, but after a few thousand miles, you find out how impressive they really are. Arctic Cat's XF8000 Cross Country is one of those sleds. To be perfectly honest, we added it to our fleet this season simply because it was a new model. We really didn't expect a lot from it. Crossover sleds oftentimes require too many compromises and end up not being good at anything. In the case of the Cross Country, we've been pleasantly surprised. Let's start in the middle. The XF chassis has long been Arctic's base platform for all of their crossovers. XF essentially stands for an extended tip tunnel and longer skid wrap in a longer track. In this case, a 137 inch Backcountry X track with a 1.75 inch lug. Our crew has always argued back and forth about what a true crossover sled really is. My opinion has always been that it's a sled that has to be as capable on the trail as it is off the trail. In the beginning, there were longer track sleds that were mostly biased to on-trail riding, which in my opinion are simply long track trail sleds. Then there were sleds largely biased to off-trail, which I consider to be toned down mountain sleds. There were in reality very true crossovers. So where do I think the XF Cross Country fits? It is absolutely a true crossover sled in its purest form. Here's why. First and foremost, it has Arctic Cat's race-inspired front suspension with trail geometry. This means that it's going to handle and ride just as well as any other pure trail-focused Arctic Cat snowmobile. And while longer than the ZR lineup, the Cross Country still features Arctic Cat's trail-focused slide-action rear skid frame. Combine these two traits with a set of Fox 1.50 QS3 shocks up front and a 1.5 QS3 on the rear arm, and you've got the makings of a really good riding snowmobile. So what does this actually mean? Well, it's pretty straightforward. For the 50% of the time this sled is meant to be used on the trail, it's an excellent trail sled. It certainly does ride great, and it's tunable thanks to those beautiful QS3s. And it handles great, just like any other Arctic trail sled. No compromises, no downsides. It's a great trail sled, but there's a whole other side to this story that's every bit as important as the first one. A crossover sled has to be capable off-trail as well, though. Now, I'm not talking about climbing mountains or boondocking through the trees at 12,000 feet. It simply has to be capable of taking a rider off the trail into untouched areas without making them work overly hard for it. The Cross Country accomplishes this first by utilizing an awesome track. The Backcountry X with a 175 lug is a 137 inch snow shovel that can propel the 8000 XF through ultra deep flatland powder with relative ease. Yes, a 175 lug is a bit tall if the snow's frozen or if there's just not a lot of it. Picking up a set of ice scratchers is probably a really good idea if you think there's ever a chance you'll ride in these types of conditions. Off-trail, ergonomics are almost as important as the sled itself, and this is another area the Cross Country stays true to its crossover title. A mountain seat is tall, narrow, and short. It's excellent for maneuvering around the sled. Yet it's still very comfortable for riding on the trail as well, which was a nice surprise. The bar is straight off an M sled, which means it's tall, adjustable, and comes with a mountain loop. And again, this is good. The bars may be on the high side for slaying trails, but it's nothing you can't get used to and learn to adjust for. But when you're off trail, the tall bars and mountain bar make side pilling or carving a relatively wide sled way easier. Other goodies like the dash run and goggle holder, rear tunnel bag, rear rack, and the giant front bumper, they don't really add to the sled's on or off trail capabilities. What they do add is cool factor, convenience, and value. On a sled like this one, the most obvious engine choice would be an 800. So the 8000 series cross country is, in our opinion, the best choice for most people. With that said, next season, this sled will have Arctic's all new and all awesome SeaTech 2 800. At the end of the day, everybody uses their sled differently. Many people who buy a cross country will never take it off trail. Others will spend most of their time off trail. Neither of these are wrong. A sled is whatever you want it to be, as long as you're comfortable with the trade-offs. When it comes to the XF8000 Cross Country Limited, those trade-offs are simply fewer and way less limiting. There's no question the XF Cross Country is an extremely capable sled both on and off the trail. But what if you want to gain just a little bit more off-trail capability? 
Is there a way to improve this sled's off-trail manners without an overly complex or expensive upgrade? Absolutely. Check out this sweet set of limited edition Brett Turcott Signature Series CNA Pro XCS skis. Aimed primarily at improving off-trail handling, they feature outboard keels for control, snow scoops for additional grip, and a tapered tail section for improved carving and side hilling. Those are just the technical benefits. Obviously, there are two other factors at play here that give a huge boost to your mental horsepower, which might just be the most important kind. First, these are a limited edition. Not everyone will get a set, and if you do, but your buddies don't, you'll be the envy of your group. Second, these skis feature Brett Turcott's signature graphics because these are the skis Brett uses. If you want to ride like Brett, it's probably a good idea to get the same gear as Brett. At least, that's the theory. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. Art to Cat. Share our passion. And by Northwest Ontario. What are you doing this weekend? If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.